By 2004, Smokey Norfolk was at the height of his music career. Yet something was missing in his life. Smokey decided to take a step of faith and answer the call into full-time ministry. Today, Smokey is the senior pastor of Victory Cathedral Worship in Chicago. In 2015, he won his second Grammy. In his book, Take the Lid Off, Smokey shares about why he said yes to ministry and offers practical tips on living life without limitations. You are a legend, I'm sorry. Wait a minute. <laughs> no, I'm not that old. No, I, will, I refuse. <laughs> you don't have to be old to be a legend. Uh, that's what they tell me. <laughs> but really, um, you were at the top of your game. You had Grammy, millions of records sold. You had money. You had everything any artist would dream of. Yet something was empty inside. And, and in that point, God asked you to do something pretty radical. What was it? Extremely radical. But, yeah. you know, that's the kind of God we serve. So every turn, every phase, every portion of my journey has been um, consumed with God's radical requests. Mm -hmm. And in that season that you're referring to, uh, the radical request was to step away from music and actually start, launch, pastor a church. And that was really life altering. As a matter of fact, uh, I did a CD right before I, I started it on this journey, this, that phase of my journey, and it's called Life Changing. And that CD was, it was really the impetus behind me saying, God, okay, yes, here I go, here I am. And so I walked away from the music industry for about six or seven years. I went kind of dormant and, and nobody could find me and everybody was wondering what happened to you, you dropped off the face of the planet. But I really wasn't, I was working and I was uh, doing a Bible study, which ended up being a church and leading God's people and building the church ministry. Uh, so it, it, it was very, very tough. It uh -huh. was a very difficult yes to give God because everything that I dreamt of, all the desires of my heart, he honored his word and he gave them to me. But he also gave them to me with the responsibility and accountability to stay in his will. Now, before you said yes, you actually just stopped going to church. Right. Well, that was a season of, of uh, frustration, anxiety, you know, stress, because I had no peace. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how you can have everything that you asked for or everything that you dreamt of. But if you do not have God, if you do not have the will of God working perfectly in your life, you won't have peace. And that's the season that I was in. My mother would call me every Sunday and say, boy, get up. I didn't <laughs> raise you like this. Go to church. Where are you going to service? And, and on top of that, I became one of the parents who's, um, you know, or in the household, father's at home, and my wife would still get up, take my kids, and go and find somewhere to worship on a Sunday morning because she understood the value and understood the importance. I understood the value and importance, but I lacked peace. Mm. And, I, and it caused me to really, you know, become introverted and to, you know, run from anything that would cause me to face God or face the accountability of not being in the will of God and the perfect will of God. Now, for those watching, they may think, wow, like you, you had all this success. You, have, you had what the world would say as you, you were on top of your game. Mm -hmm. But inside, there was something missing. Now, someone watching who's like, I feel like that. You know, I'm making all this money. I'm doing what everyone sees, sees is, mm -hmm. is, is successful. successful right. But something is missing. What would you tell them? You know, you, you've walked the journey, yeah. so what would you tell that person? I would tell them to take the lid off. <laughs> <laughs> take the lid off. I would tell them to realize that whatever it is that is devoid in their, or that is void in their life, they will never find it outside of God. The only way to know the purpose of the thing is that you have to get into the mind of the creator of the thing. Mm -hmm. And we'll never know our true purpose and never really experience true life's passion. Um, and, and it's not predicated upon external stimuli, money, fame, celebrity, increase, all the other trappings that the world say are success. Those things, they're, they're not going to give you that, that peace. They're not going to fill those vacancies, those voids. And you will forever be searching for something. You'll get to the top of whatever it is that you're in and say, that's not enough. And it's horrible to put your, to work all of your life, to put your ladder up against a wall, work, scuffle, struggle, scrap and scrape to get to the top of the wall only to realize you've got your ladder leaning on the wrong wall. Um, that's, that's essentially where I found myself, is, is my ladder was leaning on the wrong wall. Mm. I thought, this was it. I'm here now, I'm in. <laughs> but God was like, oh, there's not Yeah, more. it's like, no, but you, you're in, but in what? You know, are you in my will? Are you in my plan? 
Are you in your, your true call, the true anointing that I've placed on your life, the purpose for you? And the answer was no. And I, I, I would encourage anybody to just seek God, seek the will of God. It is perfect. It is, it is peaceful. You know, it, it does not come without struggle. It's not easy. I won't give you any, um, any fallible concepts here, but it, it, is, it is a work, but it is worth, worth it. it yeah. Oh my God, it's worth it. Now, fast forward a few years. You are now senior pastor of Victory Cathedral Worship Center yes. in, in Chicago. Yes. So would you say now that you obey God and you're walking in, in his will, what would you say? What would you, how would you describe how you feel? Uh, I'm, I'm in a very, uh, I'm still becoming, let's start there. You know, I, I think we're all like Paul. We count not to have apprehended if we're wise. And so I'm still a work in progress. I'm still being molded by God, shaped by God. But I'm, I'm enjoying this journey. I'm loving what God is doing. And I'm, I'm seeing the fruitfulness of, of him using me. And there's nothing more enjoyable, nothing more fulfilling. I'm fulfilled, nothing more fulfilling than seeing how he can take an imperfect vessel, a flawed vessel, you know, in, in the grand scheme of things, a small vessel, and use me to do magnificent works in his name. And that's where I am.